Hello, I'm Dr. Wright, and this video represents a portion of a series on lung pathology. The videos are directed towards medical students and junior pathology residents. However, other healthcare professionals might also find them useful. I've restricted the videos to pathology only, so physiology, mechanisms of diseases, and clinical findings are not going to be discussed. The series actually started with normal lung, so you might want to go back and see these episodes just to give yourself a baseline. I'd appreciate your comments, and if you find these videos useful, I'll expand the theory series. Thank you for listening. This session is direct directed towards the pathology of emphysema. The learning points are to know the definition of COPD, to know the definition of emphysema, and to learn the different types of emphysema and their associations. COPD, as defined by the Gold Consortium, is a disease state which is characterized by airflow limitation, and that airflow limitation is not fully reversible. Limitation tends to be progressive and is associated with abnormal inflammatory response to noxious particles or gases, the most common of which is cigarette smoke. The causes of airflow limitation can be divided up into reversible and irreversible. Irreversible components include fibrosis and narrowing of the airways, loss of elastic recoil due to lung destruction, and destruction of the alveolar support of the airways leading to further airway narrowing. Reversible components include mucus and inflammatory cells within the airways, smooth muscle contraction in the airways, which can be reversed by bronchodilators, and dynamic hyperinflation during exercise, which of course can be reversed when you stop exercising. COPD is generally defined by its severity. According to the gold classification, stage zero represents normal spirometry, but with symptoms, and the most severe stage four is characterized by severe airflow obstruction, respiratory failure, or clinical right heart failure. If you followed the earlier sessions on normal lung anatomy, you'll learn the difference between lobules and asini. Just to recap, a lobule is a gross term. It is defined as the amount of lung parenchyma which is surrounded by venous septa and or pleura, and can be seen here in my microscopic slide with venous septum, venous septum, and venous septum. Here are two lobules, and you can see in the center of these lobules are membranous and respiratory bronchioles. The asinus is defined as the amount of lung tissue which is subtended from one terminal membranous bronchiole, and thus includes three generations of respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli. So let's now turn to emphysema. Emphysema is defined as a condition of the lung which is characterized by abnormal, permanent enlargement of the air spaces. These air spaces are distal to the terminal membranous bronchial, i.e. present in the center of the asinus, and are, is accompanied by destruction of the walls. There are things which have airspace enlargement which are not emphysema, and these can be seen in congenital uh, conditions such as Down syndrome and congenital lobar hyperflation due to abnormality of the airways. Airspace enlargement can be acquired, so after a lung resection, the opposite lung or the lung which remains will have larger airspaces. Larger airspaces can also be found in the aging lung and within the starving lung. Emphysema itself is defined into four parts. Centriacinar or centrilobular, the terms are synonymous. Panacinar or panlobular, again the terms are synonymous. And paraseptal. Irregular emphysema or parasicatricial or scar emphysema is usually included in the classification. Fibrotic lung disease can have airspace enlargement due to reorganization secondary to the fibrosis, but this is not usually considered as emphysematous destruction. Okay, let's now talk about the different types of emphysema. Centriacinar or centrilobular emphysema. 
Here's a CT scan, which shows some rather large bulla here, but up here on the anterior aspect, you can look at these lung lobules and see destruction in the center of the lobules. This is the radiological equivalent of pathological gross central lobular emphysema. On a Goff section, cigarette smoke emphysema, which is the standard cause of centrilobular emphysema, is characterized by being worse in the upper lobe. This can be seen in this inflated lung specimen, where the disease is much more severe in the upper aspect than it is in the lower aspect of the lung, and a higher magnification from this lung shows that the destruction is present in the center of the lung lobules. This is seen to better extent on this high power view where the lobules are defined by venous septa as you can see here and the lung destruction highlighted by pigmentation is present in the center of these lobules. On this microscopic slide you can see a membranous bronchial, a first generation respiratory bronchial and where the second generations of respiratory bronchials would be there is lung destruction and replacement by this large hole. So this is central lobular emphysema and because it's in the center of the asinus it is also called centriacinar emphysema. By contrast, panlacinar or panlobular emphysema is the type which is seen prototypically with alpha-1 antitrypsin disease. Unlike central lobular emphysema, it is seen to a predominant degree in the lower lobe and when one looks at it at a higher magnification, the lobules are, have a destruction which is present throughout the lobule, i.e. panlobular or pan asinar emphysema. On a higher magnification of this Goff section, one can see that the destruction is present rel relatively uniformly throughout the lobule, and this is seen here on this microscopic section, where the destruction present in the center of the lobule is similar to that present in the periphery of the lobule. On this chest radiograph, you can see by examining the lobules that there is a similar degree of destruction present throughout this lobule, the radiological equivalent of panlobular emphysema. Paraseptal emphysema is so called because the destruction is adjacent to the septa, the venous septa, or is present in a subpleural position, as can be seen here in this Goff section. This is a surgical lung specimen with the pleural surface here, paraseptal emphysema here, and normal lung parenchyma underneath. Pure paraseptal emphysema is characterized by underlying normal lung parenchyma. However, paraseptal emphysema is quite common and is also seen in patients who have central lobular emphysema. The microscopic equivalent of the surgical lung specimen shows that the subpleural area shows extensive lung destruction with these large air spaces, bullae or blebs if you will, and underneath are relatively normal uh, alveolar ducts and alveoli. On this CT scan, the destruction is seen in a subpleural position with underlying normal lung parenchyma. Irregular emphysema is often seen adjacent to scars. In this case, it's a gone focus of tuberculosis, and you can see that there is obvious air, airspace destruction present adjacent to it with relatively normal lung adjacent to that. This is seen in the microscopic slide where the gone focus is a scar which has picked up some pigment. There are enlarged air spaces next to it, but relatively normal lung parenchyma further away from the area of abnormality. So the learning points of this session are the definition of COPD, the definition of emphysema, the different types of emphysema, and their gross and microscopic characteristics. Here are your questions. Question number one. The answer to question number one. Question number two. The answer to question number two. Question number three. The answer to question number three. I hope you've enjoyed this session on the pathology of emphysema.